Good afternoon from the state capitol. It's Peg Larson and John Call here to give you an update. And Senator Carla Nelson will give you an in-depth update of what is going on on education, finance, and taxes in the Senate. In the Senate taxes, uh, they did change some uh, location equity index language, and uh, she will talk more about that. Hello, Carla Nelson here, straight from the Capitol. We passed a tax bill today that took care of some of the mistakes in last year's tax bill, and you'll hear a lot about that. Uh, but there's one piece that you might not hear about that you as board members and education advocates are going to want to know about. Last year, passed into law was a new type of revenue options for schools. It was called LER, Local Equity Revenue. The intent of that was to allow school board approved levies of $424 per pupil if you lived in the seven county metro area, or $224 per pupil if you had uh, a certain number of students, like Rochester, was able, with board approval, to have a $224 per pupil levy. That was intended to account for the cost of living. It costs more to live in certain parts of the state than other. Teacher salaries are more, cost of living is higher. But what we found out was Rochester certainly was not treated fairly. Neither were smaller schools all across the state and in the rest of my district as well. They were in a donut hole and Rochester was not treated fairly for having the same costs as the metro area. We don't think kids should get funding based upon their zip codes and that's what that bill did. So today in the Senate we passed a tax bill that really took care of that. And now instead of LER, now we have LOR, which is local option revenue. So now any district in the state can, at board approval, levy $424 per pupil without referendum. That's what passed out of the Senate today. It will give our districts more flexibility, certainly hold our school boards accountable to the voters. They'll be making that decision. It's all about local control, about whether or not they're going to levy up to $424 per pupil. Uh, and there is a subtraction for current uh, revenue as well. That's it from the Capitol. Some of the bills that we want to watch right now are uh, Representative Mariani's House File 3062. It's Native and English Language Development and Academic Needs of English Learners from Children to Adulthood. And um, it's actually a pretty uh, bold step, but it seems to be an acceptable bill. The interesting thing about it, it, it includes uh, Representative Norton's House File 2004, which uh, is the bill for student proficiency in languages in addition, from in, in, in addition to English um, being recognized. And she had some very great testimony on that from a person who came here from China and actually spoke Chinese and wanted to test out of it, but at this point could not do that. So her bill looks like it's going to go forward. One of the other bills that we really, really are keeping an eye on is House File 2180, which is Majority Leader Aaron Murphy's, and Senate File 1835, which is um, Senator Sieben's bill. This is Education Minnesota's bill for health care. Um, they did actually admit in education in the House that this was their nose under the door to get to a statewide pool. Uh, and then a, right away he said that wasn't true, that this was just a way to make sure that everybody had a good uh, set of proposals to choose from. Self-insurers have been asking for uh, to be taken out of the bill and they have cleaned up that language but you still have to have so many proposals in a certain period of time. So we're still working on seeing if we can get Rochester out of it. And then uh, the Location Equity Index Bill by Representative Rodanovich, which is House File 2547 and Senate File 2370 by Senator uh, Jensen, which uh, Senator Senjum is on that bill, is a statewide fix for the bill. And uh, to put it in paraphrased words, the Chair of Taxes basically said, all of you were here last year when we did this and you all got taken advantage of, he used a little stronger word, and so we're here to fix it this year. Um, I will now turn it over to John Call. Have a wonderful weekend. Hi there. Uh, my remarks are going to be brief this week. I wanted just to tell you that today is the uh, first deadline for policy. People are going to be here pretty late tonight for a couple committees, especially judiciary. 
The Senate is on the floor right now debating the tax bill. I expect that will go another hour or two. There were 20 amendments last time I checked and the number was actually not going down. They were adding new amendments. So um, I don't expect there's going to be a lot of activity around here this weekend. But next week we will start the second, the week of the second deadline. So by next Friday, any bill that's not out of the policy committee is dead for the uh, biennium and would have to be reintroduced in the uh, 2015 uh, session. And uh, that's about all I wanted to bring to your attention today. Uh, have a good weekend. Talk to you next week.